uh, you know, you believe you didn't even take a penny uh, out of out of. Oh, Abdullah, you are a liar, Mufti. Mufti, get her, Mufti. They froze everything, and they gave. Me and Hassanath, a uh, limit of only spending two hundred pound a month. Oh, Mufti, great job, Mufti MVP, Mufti the goat right now, baby, Mufti the goat right now. I, I didn't understand that, and even when um, we did get arrested, we got arrested by the way, and we were released without any charge. No. She lied, Mufti, Mufti, she lied, she lied, Mufti, Mufti, she lied. Is it true that you were running a concurrently, you were running a modeling school on the side? Get him, Mufti, get him, Mufti, let's go, Mufti, let's go. Life SQ, keeping it a hundred. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to another video. Oh man, you heard it. Mufti meant catch an um a, and a lie. Oh man, oh man, oh man. It was obvious for those of us who've watched the 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 the, the Mufti make live when it was happening or watch it on someone else's uh, page or YouTube channel once it was over it just went straight up live people gotta know about it huh immediately you dove deep and you wanna know more about it what should I about where is the money huh where is it huh 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 now chances are if you've clicked on this video it's because you wanna learn more about this or you wanna hear my take on it um but here's my take on the topic it's really simple actually who the hell gives a damn and try to understand what I mean not about the 200,000 we been knew that right I think we all cut our losses a year and a half ago two years ago when this happened in the first place right we were like God, these dudes just done messed us up you know so now it's just being reported as a real charge, right? But whether they reported it or not, we know it was a real charge. Mufti Mek jumped on it. I personally think Mohammed the Hijab should have, uh, you know, um, you know, interviewed her. But I think Mufti Mek did a really good job grilling her. Like there was questions. I'm, I'm yelling at my phone. Like Mufti, ask her the question. And he did, mashallah, in his own way. Uh, I, I was Mufti Mek's anger translator. I'll probably release that video soon too, inshallah. That was a funny one. Um, but I'm not here to talk about any of this, to be honest with you. I'm here to talk to you about the the ultimate news and tea that you need to be successful and i promise you it has nothing to do with um abdullah hasanat mufti make me ali dawa muhammad hijab samal the jannah uh, dawa man shamsi who are all these people all of them uh, daniel hakika too more all of them allah's not going to ask about us allah's going to ask you about your salah and i really want to ask you to ask yourself where do you stand right now because you got to be honest with yourself. You can't fix this unless you're honest with yourself. Unless you take something called muhasaba. You see, muhasaba comes from the word hisab, right? Hisab comes from this understanding of a balance or weighing out, right? Taking, taking account. Muhasaba means you become a spiritual accountant. You become a spiritual auditor. You start auditing yourself. How was I today? How was I? Sins, good deeds, you line them up side by side. Which one's outweighing the other? Oh, SQ, my bad deeds outweigh him. I don't even want to try to do this. No, no, no. You should do it even more. Why? Because when you, when you see your sins in front of you, sometimes you got to write them out. Sometimes you got to think about them. Do what's, what, what works best for you. You see it and shaitan is going to whisper, there's no chance for you. There's no hope. Damn, this is outweighed. But you see, shaitan is causing you to forgive, uh, forget about Allah's mercy. He's causing you to forget. Because you see, all those on the left column that are bad deeds, that you feel like are outweighing you, there's no way you had a successful day. It can change from one action, and that's tawbah. You see, tawbah wipes away the whole board. There's no residue of ever being a mistake. Tawbah literally wipes the slate clean. You see, um, like, I don't know, uh, in Pakistan, they used to have these things called takht. And when you wanted to write, you would get on these clay boards and you would write. And it was really, really good because then you could just like wipe it down with more clay. It's basically a whiteboard, right, today's time. But I think that there was an art to a takht that's missing today. I think that it would be really fun. And I think people would enjoy it because it's so hands-on and it's fun, you know. It, it's like a takht, it just wipes it away, completely gone, as if it didn't happen. So all those things on the left-hand column side get wiped away. Imagine that. And it's not like a, like a, like a regular example for you guys, like where uh, if you go to an exam and you circle the wrong answer, you're like, no, no, you erase it, and you do the other one. You can still see the residue 
of that circle whether it's the engraving whether it's the actual color whether it's the eraser uh dust i just named it i didn't know if that's what it's really called but there's still some evidence that you've made a mistake you see with tauba no evidence gone just like it didn't even happen okay left side gets eliminated as if it didn't even happen so okay well today wasn't a loss it was a blank day right negated itself you didn't do any good any bad but wait, there's more. All those bad deeds of yours get converted to hasanat for you. Not that hasanat. The real hasanat, okay? It gets converted to the hasanat for you. And it's good deeds. Now, all of a sudden, your column's on the good side. So what I'm asking you to do is take genuine muhasaba, take genuine, become a spiritual auditor of yourself and ask yourself, how are you doing? It doesn't have to just be about salah. It could be about lowering your gaze. It could be about cursing your speech, music. There's a lot of other ways that you can take spiritual accountability. Uh, it could be the amount of dhikr that you made. It could be the amount of spiritual acts that you've done in that day. There's, there's so many other ways for you to take hisab of yourself. So, um, so, so don't be shy. Don't be shy. And don't be shy in correcting me. This one brother, I want to shout, uh, shout him out. When I said uh, muhasaba last time, I think I mispronounced it. And um, he, he wanted to correct me about that. And I never heard the correction, so that's why I'm still probably mispronouncing it. Uh, but shout out to him. Shout out to all of you guys who aren't afraid to correct me. Shout out to all you guys, you brave souls out there. Because the worst thing that someone could be is indifferent. You know what I mean? If you, and look, irrespective of right or wrong, if the fact that you corrected me, this shows that somewhere deep down, there's some care. There's some love behind it. It might not come in the most positive way, but I think that there's some concern behind there, you know? Uh, whether there's a concern to be correct or whether there's a concern for me is a different question, but there is some concern. So I, wanna, I want you to ask yourself to really ask yourself, where are you with your salah right now? Where is that? Where do you rank right now? Where is that? But SQ, I'm having a lot of trouble. I'm having problems. It's difficult. Yes? Um, who said Jannah was supposed to be easy? Sick burn. Who said, who said so? Jannah is not supposed to be easy. Salah is not supposed to be easy. Letting go of your wealth is not supposed to be easy. easy. Uh, starving yourself is not supposed to be easy. But somehow we do it. A hajj, you know, a pilgrimage. It's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be expensive. These are all troubles. It's not supposed to be easy. Why? Jannah is not supposed to be easy. But SQ, I could fast. Not a problem. Not always. Think back to a time when you couldn't. You got over it, right? Ah, it was difficult then, but now it's habitual. Okay. Well, why can't that be the same for your salah? Why can't it be difficult in the beginning, then become habitual? Ah, oh, SQ, but that's it. Now you want people to become in a routine? Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, I want a routine. Even if they're just making motions, sure, why not? There's some benefit in those motions. Now we could talk about khushu separately. We could talk about how a person's supposed to get khushu. How do you think you're supposed to get khushu, huh? By not doing it. Look how shaitan tricks us. You can't focus in your prayer. You're thinking about God knows what. You're in your salah. If, the, if you're in the masjid and the imam is going, you're lost. If you're by yourself, you're not even sure what rakah you're on. Okay. Are you telling me there's no benefit to that? There, there is going to be some. The question is asking you, how do you get khushu? Shaitan is going to convince you after the salah is over, or maybe even during the salah, that man, look at your salah. It's not going to be accepted. And probably some of you already felt like, how can that be any, of, any benefit? Shaitan. You see, that's what he does. He's shaitan. Look at how much that can change you. That one suggestion could take you off, put you off from praying your salah. Isn't that the bigger goal and objective of the shaitan? Which is to what? Take it to the hellfire. He knows that the salah is the crooks of the deen. After like the tawheed, the oneness of Allah, the salah is like the, the foundation of the deen. The deen is salah. You understand? Shaitan knows that Allah is going to ask you about this. You don't think shaitan knows that? Shaitan knows that Allah is going to ask you one of the first questions he's going to ask you on the Day of Judgment is about your Salah. That's why he spends so much time distracting you from it, making you delay it, or not even pray it. Or while you're in your Salah, getting distracted. He knows. He's a shaitan. I digress. Be 
May Allah increase you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. I know I halal clickbaited you guys, but I'm going to try to keep it short. I always say that, but then I go, I'm going to just get straight to my points. Okay, bismillah, bismillah, bismillah. Okay, his job is to be the shaitan, to distract you. Okay, how can you get better at something without practice? Just just give me, give me an answer. Just give me an answer right now. How can you get better at something without practice? Let's talk about your driving, if you're old enough to drive. Once upon a time, you were trash. Today, you're probably trash, but less trash than you were originally, okay? But you get better with more practice. Think about any subject. Think about any language. Think about anything that you've had to study. In the beginning, it was tough. But then you got better and better and better. Let's think about basketball. When has the solution that, oh, I suck at free throws, let me just stop practicing them. Everyone knows that the way a person could become a better free throw shooter is by putting in the hours, the reps in the gym. And we've had people, we, we've, we've seen people, some of the best big men, right, uh, are great free throw shooters. Look at Tim Duncan, right, versus a Shaquille O'Neal, okay? Shaquille O'Neal didn't genuinely care about his free throws. But you know what? He made them when it counts. And guess what? Shaq is a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Did y'all know that? No. Shaquille's a Muslim. Shaquille O'Neal, shout out to you. Assalamu alaikum, my bro beloved bro. One of the greatest players. You know, everyone talks about Jordan and all that sort of stuff. You know, but I guess because, you know what it is? A guard position is just so much flashier and cool and more marketable. Shaq made it cool to be a big man. And it just sucks that people are not, I don't know if they are. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. Maybe they keep it on the wraps. It just sucks that big men are not paying him a consulting fee. Sha Shaq would do it for free. Shaq is the type of guy that would do things like that for free because he wants to see the game progress and he wants the big man game to be back. Like Joel Embiid is not working with Shaq. Screw that. DeAndre Ayton needs to work with Shaq. DeAndre Ayton is like Shaq when he was skinny when he first came in the league. Quick, fast legs, right? But he has a jimmy. He has a flicker. He has a shot. Okay, I'm going to stop about that right now. Okay, get in contact with Shaq. Okay. This is how I go down these rabbit holes. And this video ends up being 27 minutes long. Okay, I'm going to stop. Okay. So, <laughs> the way to get better. The point is this. The way to get better is by praying more. You understand? So when the stakes are lower, try to understand what I mean by that. Some of you haters out there are just going to point at that like it's the wrong way. Just It is what it is, right? After your salah is over, you perfect your khushu, you increase your khushu in your sunnah prayers. You understand? Your, 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 your nuffle prayers, right? Because you could go at your own pace and you could dictate the pace of it. If for some reason you're praying your, your fard salah at home, Dictate the pace. Dictate the pace. You catch yourself. Pause yourself. Take a deep breath. If you want to continue from that same ayah, if you still remember where you were, continue. If not, rewind. Will Allah reward you for that? Yes or no? Will Allah reward you for your sincerity? Yes or no? Will Allah, will Allah reward you for, for, for being considerate, for being mindful because it shows signs of Iman? Yes or no? So now you have this one basic two-unit sunnah prayer becoming this mountain of deeds because you decided to be more woke and be honest with yourself about your salah. You see, the point of this video is that you have to be honest with yourself about your salah. See where you are right now. Take the hisab of yourself. Take the muhasabah I was mentioning. Become a spiritual auditor. Become a spiritual accountant. See where you are right now. And based upon that, make some moves. Be honest with yourself. Make some moves. Contact the right people. Be with the right people. Surround yourself around the right people. Be honest with yourself. Ask yourself, what does this link to? This links, guys. It leaves trails. Success leaves trails. But so does failures. Look at your trails. How did you get here? What did you do to get here? Look at those, look at those, those trails and better yourself. Seek Allah's forgiveness. Ask Allah for help. It's not easy to leave your bad habits. It's not easy, but there's a reward in leaving them. There's a genuine reward in leaving them that Allah's going to reward you for. So please don't lose hope in yourself. Please don't lose hope in who you can become in five years, in ten years, who you can be if Allah still gives us life. Me 10 years ago, uh, 2010, whew, I, if you would have told me in 2010, forget about YouTube and this. If you would have told me that you would be a practicing Muslim, and not just a practicing Muslim, a practicing Muslim who encourages other people to become practicing Muslims as well, I would have been laying on a tattoo bed and look at you and be like, get the hell out of my face. Wallahi, if you were a Muslim, you weren't allowed to be around me. 
Real talk. You weren't allowed. I didn't want nothing to do with ya. I didn't, and maybe part of it was like guilt because you would remind me of something I shouldn't be doing. Maybe, partially, right? A lot of it had to do with more identity, but that could be definitely it too. I want nothing to do with ya. At all. Goodness. I was like this dude for when it came to girls and everything like that. But if I knew you were a Muslim, no. And look how Allah is protecting you from me. From, from snakes like me. From, ugh, gardia people like me. That I didn't go to you, but it's really Allah protecting the Muslim Ummah from uh, 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 a hyena, a, 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 a hungry wolf. But anyways, if you would have told me, like just somehow pull me. You know, the only way I would have believed it is if like in the science fiction movies or like Mr. Peabody where you go back in time and you could meet your former self and you could tell them about something like Back to the Future or something. You know, but that doesn't exist. You know, the point is this. Keep that surprise alive. If you're someone who's not doing those things right now, don't think that, that it can't be you. Have some hope in yourself. Have some hope in the mercy of Allah and how Allah can change your situation. Have some hope and mercy in these things, guys, because, because it's, it's Allah's mercy is real. His, his, his ability to turn your heart, qalb, right? Look at the root meaning of it. And someone in the comment section tell us, it has something to do with how things turn, how they wobble, how they wave. Maybe your heart is just waved in the wrong direction right now. Can Allah not soften it and wave it the other way? He can. When you're ready, when you make the effort, when you put the first step in, when you put in the work. And by the way, you should watch the other Salah videos I have. They're really good. They're more emotional. They're more like there. But I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that, uh, brother, it's 16 and a half minutes at the moment, approaching 17. I got to quicken this up. Um, I know I'm, I'm being serious because I don't want to just blabber and blabber and blabber and 27 minutes come and subhanAllah, may Allah forgive me. You know, uh, you guys are going to be questioned about your time as well. What are the other five things that you'll be questioned about on the Day of Judgment? Tell me in the comment section below. Okay. I see. I forgot what I'm saying. It's probably, it's probably for the best, right? Um, the point is this, the point is this, right? I'm not going to tell you to go pray, read your salah, brothers and sisters. Blah, 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 blah. Duh. That's not the reason you're not praying it. You think you're not praying it because you don't know it's correct? That's not the reason you're not praying it. You're not praying it right now because you haven't seen the value in it. The only time you have prayed it is when you wanted some value from it. That's some deep stuff I'm saying. Think about the times when you had to like get ready for an exam. You wanted value from the spirituality, so you prayed it. But you used it only to seek value. The reason you're not consistently praying it is because you don't see value in it. You don't see value in his longevity of it. Yeah, you could say shaitan. You could say laziness. You could also say the argument that Allah is keeping it away from you. All those arguments are true. But leaving those arguments aside, if you're talking about holding you accountable, you're not praying it because of you. You're not praying it because of the value. You don't. And that's the honest truth. So this video is all about honesty. The same way I encourage Umm Abdullah. Because I did hear the Mufti Menk thing. But she, 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 done just, she was just avoiding the question. Yeah, yeah, feel me, right? Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. I'm probably going to make the angry impersonator uh, voice. I'm going to be the anger translator of Mufti Menk's anger translator. All right. With that being said. With that being said, I love you all for the sake of Allah. Be honest with yourself. The same way Umm Abdullah needs to be honest with us and herself, uh, let's be honest with ourselves, right? Let's take muhasaba of ourselves. Let's become better people. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be honest where we, where we are with our salah right now, with our relationship with our family, our parents, our spouses, our children, our brothers and sisters, our siblings. Some of y'all don't even talk to your brothers and sisters. You're not even close to them. Y'all share the same room, but y'all don't even talk to each other. Wallahi. Tell me that wasn't the truth. Stop playing games with me. Okay, love you all for the sake of Allah. And until next time, I'm out.